Uh, so I, I, anytime I speak with people from Ring of Honor, I talk about this meeting that I had heard about so much. It was before the pandemic. It might have even been like late 2019. I haven't pinpointed mm-hmm. the date. But I think it really, I thought it really exemplified a new direction for Ring of Honor in them, especially listening to their talent. Because from what I heard, they flew all of you guys into headquarters. They said, what can oh, we change? Oh, Summit. Yeah. They, they said, what yeah. can we change? What should we change? And I constantly had people saying, like, this was a turning point. They really started to listen. Like, they changed catering. They changed all kinds of stuff. What do you remember about that meeting? Because it seemed like there was some real high-level stuff going on in there. Like, you know what? These creative people might have some ideas in their brains that might work out pretty good for our brand. No, yeah, that was great. That was, yeah, that was, um, like, December 2019 or, like, November 2019, like, right before uh, Final Battle that year. And they had just like, hey, like, hey, we're doing this talent summit in Baltimore, and um, uh, people who are local, we uh, we drove over, and then like they flew in the like pretty much the, the entire roster because that allowed them to also do like some free tapes for Final Battle as well, like the next yeah. day. So it ended up just all kind of like working out. Um, but yeah, we the whole roster were sat in like a uh, at the Sinclair headquarters, and we all were in the a room, and they gave everybody a chance to if you wanted to come up and just talk about either ideas they had or just like kind of just their feelings on ring of honor as a whole, you know, cause this was like at that period where like, you know, and, you know, I'm fortunate to say it was kind of like a down, like a down period for us, like a real down period. Like after uh, like the elite and everything left and AEW is just kind of forming, getting real hot and like uh, things are just kind of like at a, a rough patch for us. Like I said, I've been, been here for like the past 10 years. I've seen so many rough patches for us and we've always pulled through. So it was just kind of a, uh, one of those things, but it, it felt really good to have everybody there and get a chance to talk. Like, there was literally like a giant whiteboard of yeah. writing out everybody's ideas, just kind of filtering through them. And you know, like like even one of the big ideas was catering. And uh, like that next month uh, at Final Battle in Baltimore, we had this amazing like catering spread. It was awesome. Uh, actually, we had uh, fun fact: we had like two catering things. They had the Ring of Honor one, and also Mark Briscoe and his wife made deer chili for everybody. Oh, was, I've yeah, never had yeah. deer chili, dude. It was, dude. It was. It was good. It was really like Mark Risco. He had been telling us like a few months. He's like, "Oh yeah, I got this deer. Like I'm gonna make deer chili for the battle." We're like, "All right, cool. okay, cool." He brought it, brought a whole crock pot. And when his wife, they, uh, you know, it was, dude, it was tremendous, oh, absolutely I'm, tremendous. I'm not a hunter, but I live in Kentucky, and I can tell you, when somebody kills a deer, they are all too excited to share it with literally everybody they know. Like, <laughs> wait, you live in Kentucky? Wait, you live in Kentucky? Uh, middle of nowhere, yeah. For, I don't know. I, for some reason, I thought you lived in Florida. For some reason, but I feel like everybody uh, lives in Florida. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's a nightmare down there. But yeah, I live in between Cincinnati yeah. and Lexington. Hopefully, pretty wow, soon okay. it's just Lexington. But yeah, uh, but yeah. I mean, when when somebody out here kills a deer, <laughs> they're like, "Who can I share this with?" <laughs> yeah, they're very yeah, he, proud of that. It was, dude. It was him and his wife. Like they made that deer chili. It was, it was fantastic. So. No, the cater room was good, but the, uh, I, I give the edge to the Mark Briscoe deer. And, uh, I mean, I think ROA should be commended with how they handled the pandemic. Uh, oh, they, yeah. They, I mean, oh, yeah. it's still not safe, quote-unquote, but they, they waited a lot longer than a lot of other people did. They took all kinds of precautions and preventative measures. I mean, there were some big matches on pay-per-view that unfortunately had to be delayed. Like, EC3 and Jay Briscoe was a match I was very excited for, and they were like, you know, we could probably skate by. We could probably get away with a lot of yeah. this stuff, like a lot of other places did. But they didn't, and they it's it showed. I thought a a really good. It was a really good indication that they cared about you guys. No, uh, yeah, absolutely, like a hundred percent. Like they they waited as long as possible, and they they formed a like they they worked with the commission of Maryland, just formed a plan, and had like like hey, we're going to do the bubble. This is how we're going to do it. Here are precautions. Here's how testing is going to work. Here's how scheduling is going to work. Here's how things are going to work with the arena. Here's how setup's going to work. Like they had everything so planned and figured out just to keep us uh, safe. And like that was, you know, ex- ex- like that was just incredibly awesome. And it ended up working out. And I think like, like we, like with the, how we set up our arena and how we presented the, especially the pure tournament, how we presented it, like very um, more sports oriented. I thought like in terms of, no fans like tapings. I thought we were doing some of the best like in wrestling. I thought we just like we figured out a way to kind of like shoot it and make and keep the energy up um, while not drawing to the t- uh, not drawing attention to the fact that there's no fan noise and there's no crowd there to hype it up. I thought we we had a really good. I thought we did a really good job of like presenting that. And yeah, they they did a, they did an awesome job. Like I'm really happy that they 
took those precautions and like you know i would talk to like people in like other companies and they would be like oh like they're just doing that to like safe face and they're just like you know they don't need to do all that it's good safety. i'm like no man like like they're they're doing this to they're working with the commission they're trying to make this as safe as possible and then like you know like i hate to say it but we're like we're as far as i'm aware we're one of if not the only company that, that didn't have at least like one major outbreak like yeah. during the whole thing 